Good morning. Everybody do the sign of rock. This is meaning. You're all amazing. Thank you very much for coming. How are you? That's rubbish. How are you? Great. Well, welcome to the Meaning Conference 2017. I am lucky, honoured to be uh, your co-host, di guest director, that kind of guy. My name is Mark Stevenson. Apparently, I'm a futurologist. I rather hate that job title. It's a bit of a bullshit job title. Uh, invented in the 1930s by one story uh, by an advertising agency that thought they could convince their clients that they knew what uh, the consumer was going to be doing in the future. So they put the word ology next to the word future. Gave that to some poor bastard in the office and said, you're now the futurologist. There are no qualifications for being a futurologist. And, uh, and one of the reasons I don't like futurology is because it's kind of associated with prediction. And we get all our predictions wrong. Um, Dennis Gabor, the Nobel Prize winning physicist, said, I have the quote here, the future cannot be predicted, but futures can be invented. And that's what we're here to discuss today about how to invent a different future. So for me, futurology is not really about telling you what will happen, but it's about getting you to be future literate, by which I mean getting you to ask the right questions by getting to understand the questions the future is asking you. And then from wherever you are, try to answer those questions in a way that makes the world more sustainable, more equitable, more humane, more just. We're going to talk a lot about innovation today. I define innovation as the culture of asking the right questions. But as we all know right now as a society, we seem to be failing to do that very badly. Um, so let's make no bones about it at the start. Everything is broken, isn't it? Like everything, it doesn't take more than a pint on a Friday night for most of us to agree that everything is largely fucked. <laughs> uh, we have the wholesale evaporation of trust in institutions that govern society. Democracy, what we call democracy, is in retreat, mostly because we're using a 19th century system to deal with 21st century challenges. Our media seem incapable of discussing solutions, are uh, only happy to divide us and set us against each other. The food and energy system is unsustainable. The healthcare system is really a labyrinthine and massively expensive sick care system. The financial system is riven with systemic risk. Uh, and short-termism um, seems to be baked into its operating logic. There's a great cartoon by Tom Toro that appeared in the New Yorker that said, uh, yes, the planet got destroyed, but for a beautiful moment in time, we created a lot of value for shareholders. <laughs> the fact that you're laughing at that means it's true. And if it's true, it's tragic. Our education systems are stuck in the 1950s, and on average, 85% of employees hate their jobs. So this is clearly a system that isn't working. They hate their jobs because they realize they're working for a morally blind system that no longer serves the needs of our future. So it seems a bit over overwhelming uh, that nothing can be done, that the future is lost. Um, humanity is a folly, a joke. Donald Trump is the president of the United States. Irony is dead, and the human race will soon follow. I thought I'd start on a high note. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to let you into a secret. Uh, and it's this, that it won't last. And it won't last in part because of people like you. Um, we've been here many times before. So two weeks ago, I was asked to open a, a conference about the future of the charity sector. And the other two openers were, were Nick Clegg. He's got a lot of time in his hands at the moment. And, um, <laughs> and the economist David McWilliams. And David quoted a W.B. Yeats poem. And, I, and it struck me so forcibly that I'm going to shamelessly nick his rhetorical clothes and, and quote it to you. So it's a poem called The Second Coming. It was written in 1919, after the First World War, and uh, at the beginning of the Irish War of Independence. And Yeats, like many of his countrymen, saw madness abroad. Everything was going wrong. And he wrote this. Things fall apart. The center cannot hold. Mere anarchy is loosed upon the world. The blood-dim tide is loosed and everywhere. The ceremony of innocence is drowned. The best lack all conviction, and the worst are full of passionate intensity. I think that could have easily been written yesterday. The populists at the moment, with their sort of easy slogans and rhetorics, they blame everybody. They shout from the rooftops. They ask us to imagine a golden age when we had control and dominion of our borders and our finances and some kind of racial identity, which proves, of course, that none of them have studied history. But their blood-dimmed tide is loose, and it is everywhere. So Yeats had it right. But there's one line in the poem that doesn't resonate with me quite so much, and it's this one. The best lack or conviction. That's not true. Not today. Uh, because they're here. They're in this room. Um, 
and in rooms like this across the world. And I know that because it's my job to go around the world finding people who are trying to make a better future and document their stories and hopefully give us a roadmap to that better future. You see, there's always been a subset of people who think differently, but there's an even smaller subset of people like you who decide to do differently. And for them, the roll call of bad news, not helped by the fact the media thinks the bad news is the only news, is not necessarily a cause for despair, but a call to arms. And they start to roll up their sleeves and say, go, go I can fix that. And when it comes to the future, they're here to remind us that the, there are more options available than any political group or corporate uh, organization or religion will tell you. It's possible. You are here to make the future better. And that is what Meaning, the Meaning Conference, is all about, about that conviction. And it's a gathering place to put some fuel back in your tank, because we all know what it's like, don't we? Uh, the cynics will tell you that your dream of creating a, a meaningful organization that leaves the world better than you found it is a naive pipe dream that you're kind of just wasting your time. Uh, Machiavelli famously wrote in, in The Prince, it ought to be remembered that there is nothing more difficult to take in hand, more perilous to conduct, or more uncertain in its success than in an introduction in the order of new things. Because the innovator has for all those, so, sorry, so, because the innovator has for his enemies all those who have done well under the old system, and he has lukewarm defenders in those who might do well in the new. In short, basically, you're on your own, pal. Except you're not. Because look around you. You are not on your own. So what are we going to do today? Well, if you look in your booklet, you'll know there's a lot on. And this is your record for the day. So this is where you write down your thoughts and your notes and your doodles and your actions. And make sure you do write some actions down. Because if you don't go away from today with, the, with some actions, there's really no point in you being here. Um, but Louise, uh, Ash, and I uh, have brought together, we think, a pretty good um, roster of speakers. And just before we go on, I'd like everybody to give Louise Ash, who basically makes this happen, a huge round of applause. <laughs> she is awesome. i have been really pleased to work with her the last sort of uh, six months on this. And she is literally one of the nicest and most brilliant human beings on the planet. She'll hate me saying that, and that just proves how humble and wonderful she is. Um, uh, so we're gonna, we've, got a, you know, we've got a whole bunch of really inspiring speakers, but we're also not going to shy away from the difficult stuff. Um, we've included in today's uh, uh, set of talks some quite robust challenges. Uh, there's going to be some people up here that you and I might disagree with, but I think the challenges that they offer us are a good reality check and hopefully an opportunity to collaborate as well. We're going to look at the big picture. We're going to look at the global context. We're going to look at technology. We're going to look at chaos and how to handle it. And we're going to look at new ways of working and bring you some stories of people who've done something truly amazing, creating organizations with meaning. They're here to remind us that nothing is impossible. So there's this old Chinese proverb, uh, when the winds of change blow, some people build walls and some people build windmills. And today is really about the windmills. Thank you very much for coming.